came expecting. Amen. Well, let's give the Lord some praise for our brother, Roger Rodriguez, as he brings Hallelujah. the word. Amen. Woo. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. You're awesome. You're mighty. You're wonderful. How many believe that we serve a wonderful God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't we have so much to be grateful for tonight? Is there anyone here that can say they're really grateful for all of what God has done in their lives? Mm. I sit and I think and I, I look around in this place and I see God's hospital at work. I see physicians' hands and I see people being healed and I see people being touched and I, I see people when they come in in a mess and I've seen people that become the message. And I've seen what God has done in people's lives in this place. How amazing it is. I remember when Friday night was party night. When Friday was the night for to go to the club and go out there and do the things that you want to do. But you know what? Now my Friday night, my clubbing night is right here. Hallelujah. In the house of God. Oh, I got so much to thank God for, you know? I could just think, I start thinking back to my past and I say, Lord, I thank you for my future now, Lord God. Because you know what? It was a journey from my past to my future, from my mess to my message. Hallelujah. I got so much to be thankful for. And, and I just praise God for my pastor, Pastor Tony Samuels and, and his wife. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, for Brother Ralph, hallelujah, Pastor Ralph and Diane, hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, for all the leaders of the house, Lord God, for what you're doing in their house in this time, in this season, in this dispensation, oh God. I thank you for all the leaders and all the laborers, Lord God, all those that don't get seen, that work behind the scene to make this day possible, oh God. For all the ladies, hallelujah, that labor, ha ha, to be able to make this place what it is tonight so that we could come and meet with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I thank you, Heavenly Father, hallelujah, that, Lord, that tonight, Lord God, the heavenlies, Lord God, and the earth are going to get ready to kiss, oh God. And I believe that, hallelujah, in the supernatural realm, oh God, that someone's getting ready to get set free tonight, oh God. I believe that tonight is our night too, oh God, just as the man prophesied, hallelujah. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for the leaders. I thank you for the word. I thank you for the preparation that you've been, Lord God, sending to this house, oh God. I thank you for the eloquent words that, Lord God, like Pastor Cecil last week, Lord God, when he spoke on faith. I know, did anyone get shaken up, hallelujah, last week by that word of faith? Hallelujah. I thank the Lord for minister... Minister Angel Gonzalez, hallelujah, that says, you know what, we all need to be in, hallelujah. Are we all in it to win it? Do we have any winners in the house? Hallelujah. Do we got some that been through some stuff, but now, hallelujah, you can say I'm all in, hallelujah. Don't let your mess dictate your life. Listen to me. I come to tell you tonight, don't let the stuff that's gone on in your life, the situations you've been through, the storms that could have taken you out, hallelujah, dictate to this moment in your life where you are right now. You know, I sit around and I think about, you know, and here I'm letting out part of my message, but I'm going to say something before I let everybody sit down. I got to say, I thank you, Lord. Because everybody in this room has been tested. Is there anyone here that hasn't been tested? I need to know so like that I could call on God right now to, to pray for you right now. Everyone here has been through a test. And you know what I like about the test? I could tell you right now, I could grade your test because you know I know that you're here right now. You know your test didn't take you out. Your test didn't take you out. Listen, your test did not take you out. 
Hallelujah. 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 We've been through some stuff. We've been through some situations. But you know what? Here you are. Hallelujah. A place that God ordained, a place that God rose up so that every one of you could touch these grounds. I thank God, hallelujah, tonight. I call on supernatural healing right now for Pastor Jose right now in the name of Jesus. In the name above every other name right now, I come to you, Lord. I petition for my pastor, Lord God. I call him whole right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name above every other name, I call you whole tonight. Yes. Yes. Come on now. Brother Bruce Bashad, I call you forth right now. I call your healing right now to come right now in contact with you right now in the name of Jesus. Sister LaDonna, the faithful one, I call you whole tonight. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, it must go right now. And for each and every one here tonight that needs a touch, for each and every one of you that are here that are wounded, that are hurt, that are going through some stuff, that are just getting here, that are just getting to see what it is, you don't know what, what God has intended for you tomorrow, I call you healed tonight. In the name of Jesus. All those in their cars, all those that right now are watching by the way of hallelujah of the internet right now, I call you whole and healed as well. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. I speak those things that be not as though they are over your life right now. I call you into this house right now by the power of the blood of Jesus. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. We can go home now. <laughs> you may have a seat. You may have a seat. <laughs> you thought you was going to get off that easy, huh? <laughs> it's, it's amazing when I sit around and I think of all of that's been going on here in the house and the transitions and, and how things have changed so much. But you know what? I, the Lord birthed out a word for me about faith. And my brother, I'm not going to steal the thunder from him because he's not here tonight. But I want to say, you know, he just did such an awesome job, Pastor Cecil. I'm still amazed, you know what I mean? I've seen faith at work in this house every day of my life. It gives me the power, it gives me the strength to be able to come here over and over and over again to be able to sow from all of what the Lord has blessed me with. It's giving me the power to get up and do it again and again and again and again. And I thank God, hallelujah, for men like that. For men like my brother, once again, like I said, Angel Gonzalez, hallelujah, that was bold enough to speak about the confession of what he'd been through in his life. But I want to quickly go to 1 John 5.15. I only got two and a half hours to get this across, so I just want to do it right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. While the heavenlies are open, hallelujah. It could close in 20 minutes, so I want to get it in there, right, guys? 1 John 5.15. Who is it that overcomes the world? Yeah. Uh -huh. Who is it that overcomes the world? Yeah. Amen. We got some overcomers in this house. I love it. Ha. It just goes to show that God is doing something in Riverview, Florida. Hallelujah. Amen. That there is a house of healing. Hallelujah. Where people can come wounded, hurt, destroyed, 
and get put back together and brought back into society. And God is doing something amazing in the people. And God is lifting people up. And God is seeing people, them, their needs being met. Hallelujah. Only the one who believes can overcome the world. If they believe that Jesus is the Son of God, how many here believe? Oh, how many? All right, amen, amen. Let's move around right along to 1 John 5, 13. Let's move down a little bit down in the page. I write these things to you who believe in the name of who? Of the Son of God. That you may know that you have what? Hold it, say that again. You have what? So I was in the world and I was messed up and I was destroyed and I was in pieces and I was living under a bridge and, 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 and I lost everything and, and hell and high water came against me. But I have what now? Oh, I don't want to say no more about that because that right there has a period right there. I don't have to say no more about that one. Can I get a yay and amen to that one? Okay, all right. So let's move along. 1 John 5, 14. This is the confidence that we have in approaching God. And we know that. Why? Because if we ask anything according to what? What happens? He, he, oh, so you mean if you have a petition that you need to bring before God, you can speak to him and he hears you? And he listens to you? You, you, you talk, you're talking about you serving a God that when you're down and out, you can say, Lord, I rent my heart to you tonight, Lord. I rent my heart. I take this situation, Lord, and I throw it at your feet here on the altar, Lord. And he hears your cry. Is that the kind of God we're talking about here? Oh, all right. So we're getting somewhere so far. So we, we established that we have eternal life and that if we believe in the Father and that he hears our cries, he hears our petitions. You know what, what's really cool? I'll tell you what's really cool. Let's go to 515. Ready, 515? If we know he hears us, whatever we ask, what's the second part? You what? If you know that he hears you, you know that what, guys? Are you guys asking God for anything? Oh, yeah. So do you know you're getting it? Yeah. Hold on. Let me go to this side for a minute. Let me make sure that everybody's doing that. Hey, you guys know that y'all asking God and y'all hearing and you're getting it? Yeah. Oh, how about here in the middle? Are you guys? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, all right, all right. So we established the third part. I'm like Perry Mason. I just put it together in pieces, all right? I want to stop right there just for a moment to tell you a little story of something that I went through, and then I'll get back to the Word. I went for a drive with my wife out into, uh, how you call that place we went out to, honey? Yeah? Fish Hawk. Beautiful place. I mean, it seems like a whole world away when you go out to Fishhawk, how beautiful the houses and the landscape and the greenery and, and everything. And I, my boss lives out there, and I said, let me go check it out where he's living. He's always telling me about these mansions and beautiful houses. I mean, it's really nice. And some of you guys, guys here may know, some of you girls may know, some of you may have visited. I'm riding down the street in Fishhawk with my wife. Doing 55. So as I'm doing 55 riding down the road in Fishhawk, the most amazing thing that could ever happen to a person happened. And you ain't going to believe it. That's why I got to tell you about it. I'm doing 55 miles an hour down the road. I'm watching for the radar car because I know if I do another five more miles, I might get a ticket. And the most amazing thing happens to me. A chicken with three legs comes galloping up next to my car. It's doing 55 miles an hour, this chicken. Three legs. I'm like, Lord, three legs. I said, honey, honey, 
quick, get your, get, get, get your phone, take a picture, take a picture. And I'm doing 55 miles an hour next. I said, nobody's going to believe me. That is a three-legged chicken, honey. Take a picture. Come on. She's fumbling through her bag and the phone phone. Come on, take the picture. They ain't going to believe me. Lo and behold, click, click, click. She takes the picture and we look at it. She got the third leg only and none of the chicken. I said, they're not going to believe me, honey. Listen to me. They're not going to believe me. So I said, nah, I got to catch this chicken. So, I mean, I, I never seen nothing like this. I mean, three legs. So I start speeding up. I got up to 60, and the chicken's still ahead of me. I said, what kind of chicken is this? My God. I start doing 65. Now I'm looking out on my window saying, I hope I don't get a speeding ticket. I get up to 65, I'm just about up to the chicken. I'm telling honey, don't miss out on this picture this time. This is it. We only got one more chance because if not, I'm going to get a ticket. 65 miles an hour, the chicken is still running. All you see is dust and everything and these three legs, you know. <laughs> and man, out of nowhere, like I got to like about 70 miles an hour. And I finally pulled up to this three-legged Tony, a three-legged chicken. I'm running my car. So I finally get up to him. I said, honey, snap the picture right now. She pulls up her camera. She goes to snap the picture. You know what happens? The three-legged chicken made a right turn and started running down this road. So I get in my car, and I, ah, the car spins around. You know my little car, that little thing. So I'm like, ah, doing one of these. And finally, I hit the gas again. Now I'm going down the road, like doing like 50 or 60. Wally, I, I was crazy. I got to catch this chicken. I'm doing 60 miles an hour down this road, and now all you see is smoke from him, and you see smoke from me because everything was blowing up, right? I'm going down the road. Finally, I get to the end of the road. When I get there, it's a big, big farm. And I pull into the farm. And I look around and I tell my wife, honey, look at this. She said, why? Every chicken in the farm had three legs. They're running around all over the farm. Chickens with three legs. I'm like, i never seen nothing like this. I tell her, I'm going to go over there and I'm going to knock on the guy's door. So Tony, tan, 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 tan. I knock on the guy's door. A little old guy comes out. I said, sir, uh, forgive me for coming up to your door like this. I know I could get shot for this, but could you tell me a little bit about these three-legged chickens? And the guy said, sure. He says, what do you want to know? I said, first of all, they're like a hybrid or something different. I mean, how did this come about? I've never seen one in my life. The thing outran me, it did 70 miles an hour, and I ran my car. And the guy tells me, you know, what happened was me and my wife always like to eat chicken legs. Yes, so, and, 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 you know, and us liking to eat chicken legs so much, we started to read up. And as we found, there's a gene that you can hit a chicken with. And when you hit them with this gene, they grow a third leg. So I'm like, serious? <laughs> For real? He says, yeah. I said, so let me, I got to pop the question. Don't mind me. I'm leaving now. I'm not going to bother you no more. I got to pop the question. I asked the guy, how do they taste? How does a three-legged chicken taste? Wally, three-legged chicken, how does it taste? So the guy turns around and looks at me. He says, you won't believe it. I said, what happened? He says, I haven't caught one yet. <laughs> So that's the story of my chicken. All right, so let's go on. I haven't caught one yet. <laughs> all right, guys, I'm sorry. All right, it was a little corny. All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Come on, you got to, hey, in church, it's Friday night. We're going to have fun, right? In the club, you could have told me anything, and I would have, you know, danced to anything you told me. So in church, I mean, why can't we have a little fun? Can we? Is it all right? 
All right, okay, all right. All right. With no further ado, two hours and 15 minutes left. The title to my message is, On My Journey, I Found Faith. On my journey, I found faith. I was going to talk about faith, but then the Lord took me on a journey. Amen. So let's, let's flip to uh, Mark eleven twenty two through 26. And everybody has it, say amen. Now I have no voice. <laughs> I'll give you my notes, Pastor Tony. <laughs> How many relentless people are in the house? How many relentless people are in this house tonight? Come on. Let's tell our, how many relentless people are really in this house? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Now, can I ask one question before I get to that word? How many people are here that have bulldog faith? Yeah. Listen, listen. Let me come over here. Let me ask that. Wally, how many people have bulldog faith? Huh? We have some people here with bulldog faith? Yeah. This is your night. The man prophesied, this is your night. This is your night, too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to try to get to this word. You guys keep doing it to me. So Jesus answered and said to him, Verily, no, excuse me, I said to him, Have faith in God. 23. He said, For verily I say unto you, Whoever says to the mountain, Be removed. And be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in their heart, but believe that those things he says, he will be, it will be done, he will have whatever it says. What we established earlier, right? So therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask for, whatever things you pray for, believe that you shall receive them. And you will have them. Listen, if you're praying for something, I just want to hang a nail there. If you're praying for something and you don't have the belief that it's going to come to pass, it's not going to ever happen. It's not going to happen, guys. I got to tell you. We've been through the storm. We've seen the situation. And we know that we know that we know through the test in life, it didn't take us out because we're here tonight, like we said before. Okay. And whenever you stand in prayer, if you have anything against anyone, forgive them. Is everyone forgiving every, every person that get done them wrong? Huh? Is everyone in this house can really truly say right now that you forgive everyone that's done you wrong? Because if you can't, before this night is over, you have, you're going to need to come visit the doctor. Listen to me, I'm telling you tonight, come visit the doctor tonight. Because he's going to want to heal you tonight before it's all over with. Don't go to sleep without leaving it at the altar. Tonight is going to be your night, what we spoke about, right? And for it to be your night, there's some things that you're going to have to leave behind. We're going to make a decision tonight. We're going to party tonight. But part of the partying is leaving everything behind so that we can continue to go forward. So everybody say amen to that? Okay. So. That your Father in heaven may also forgive your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven Forgive you. Now, you hear that? We can fake it till we can make it, but we can do what we got to do and be real men and women of God. Men and women of the 2000th century that says, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired of all the games. I'm sick and tired of playing with what God has got for me. I've made a decision 
You got to make a decision tonight. Hallelujah. If you're going to go on this journey that I'm going to talk about tonight, you need to make a decision. Because for you to go on a journey, it's a process. Let me ask you a question, Wally. You're a barber, right? If I took your clippers right now and I went over to my wife and I tried to clip her hair, what do you think would happen? I went, why? Okay. You do it differently. Wally, if I took your clippers and I came over to one of these guys that got shorter hair and I started to give them a fade, what do you think would happen? The fade line would be all the way up here, right? See, you need to understand this man did not become a barber overnight. This man became a barber through a process. On the journey, the process of learning that, you know what? How many times you messed up people's hairs learning? Huh? Did you mess up some hairs? It was a process to get to becoming that man that has a license now that could take anybody in this room and cut their hair. How many people per hour you used to cut at one time? You could cut up to how many people in one hour? You could cut six people's hair in one hour. I think I could do 10 in one hour if you give it to me because I'm going to make you bald, I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> when you look in the mirror, you're going to say, oh, my God. All right, so let's move along. Matthew 17:20. Everybody say amen. We got it? So Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, for because of your unbelief, right, for assuredly I say to you, if you have the faith of a mustard seed, you will say to that mountain, move. What happens? Move from here to there. Hold it. You can make things move when you have a mustard seed faith. You know how big is a mustard seed? Has anybody seen a mustard seed? If I had one in my finger right now, you wouldn't see it because it's so small. And how much do you need to be able to say that I mounted to move in your life? You just need a mustard seed faith. We need to learn to exercise our right in God. To have a mustard seed, brothers, a mustard seed, sisters, to be able to say to all those things you left behind the day you decided to come into this house, be removed by the power of the blood. Be removed, be removed, be removed, be removed. I think we should have the most free men and women in all of Riverview, Florida, right here in this house. Huh? Does anybody believe that? We should have the most free people that any church could ever have because we see more than just a church that opens up a Bible and says, you know, the Word of God says. I met a guy today that he says, we're Bible only. We don't speak about nothing but the Bible. And I looked at him and I said, you mean I can't talk about my three chickens, my three-legged chicken? He said, nope, we only talk about the Bible. I mean, you mean I can't talk about that guy that has a problem in my church? Nope, we're only about the Bible. See what I'm saying, Pastor Tony? You see what we're dealing with here in Riverview, Florida? What men and women take for granted sometimes, you're in a place where all you need to have is mustard seed faith that all those things you left behind could be gone? Must have seen faith that you could say to that mountain, be removed by the power. We look into mirrors, we, we sit there and we write prayer petitions. Listen, stand up. I don't need nobody to grab me. I don't need you to grab me and pull me up. I want to pull myself up yes. myself. Yes. And that's how each and every one of you here have to look at it tonight. I need to pull myself up. I need to take charge in my life so that all those obstacles that were in my life, listen, 
Some of you here have had some valley experiences. Some of you have had a mountaintop experience, haven't some of you? Yes. Have you ever experienced a mountaintop experience? I remember a brother here that used to sit here and jump. I think he was going to hit the roster and bend it after the fire. I mean, that man was on fire, and he used to, you remember who I'm talking about? And this guy just took off. Bam! He hit those two doors and started running. I was like, where are you going? He was, he was, you remember that guy that did that? This was years ago. He ran out the door, and I mean, they had to go get him, right? My man was up, and he was like, he was in flight, this guy. He just, he had an encounter, and he was gone. The mustard seed must have grew, and it was so big that it just, whoosh, man was out the door. So I come to tell you tonight, faith is not an experience. Faith is not an experience. Faith is a journey. Faith is a journey. And on the journey, you're going to experience some things. Because you're going to have to go through a process. I'll never forget the first time I tried to bake a cake. Oh, man, I thought I was, you know, Harry the Baker, you know. Hold on a minute. <laughs> Fred, I put on my apron. I did my thing. And I, you know, and I'm reading the instructions. And, I mean, I got this down pat, man. I got this is me, man. And the box looks so good for Past it was a chocolate cake that looked like, oh my God, this thing, no Duncan Hines. I mean, this was a cake, you know what I mean? I paid three bucks for that one, you know? It wasn't a dollar twenty-nine in Walmart, you know? Man, when that thing was done, it never rised up because I forgot to put baking powder in it. <laughs> the cake never got there. I mean, it never made it, right? <laughs> and that just goes to see part of the process. You got to understand the process says, you know what, until you don't have it down pat, until you don't understand what it is that you need to do to put into them ingredients, until you don't do it over and over and over and over again, you're going to be tested because you're going to keep spending your money, spending your money, spending your money, buying the ingredients again, failing again. Having to deal with the thing of looking at your wife and saying, I did it again, honey, I'm sorry. I tried. And you know what the worst thing about Lewis? When they laugh at you. <laughs> when they laugh at you, really, you know, yo, listen, I, I fried the chicken, but I burnt it. He said, man, that thing is dry. Oh, my God. I wouldn't even give it to the dog, man. <laughs> and here I'm thinking, hey, man, I'm being a good man. You know, I'm, you know I went and, you know, I labored and made a dinner, but I burnt the chicken, you know. <laughs> So it's all part of the process. All of us are going to go through some tests. All of us are going to go through some trials. All of us are going to go through some situations. Let's pick a person in the Bible. Who you say, Job? All right, let's try Job. What did Job go through? Somebody tell me. What? I said, I heard it over here. What? Everything. He, went he, everything. he went through everything. What did Job lose? Job. He lost everything? Wow, oh, man. I need to read my Bible more often, but I thought I could fool these guys. You know what I mean? Pastor, don't mind me. I'm going to try on this side. So he lost everything? Really, ladies? Is it true? All right, I believe you guys, the way y'all scream and y'all hoop and y'all holler, I love it. <laughs> Job, Job lost everything in a test. It was a test. The enemy asked the Lord, can I sift him? Can I have permission to sift him? I want to see if I can really trust in who this man is. And the Lord said, sure, I know what this man's made of. I know if I give him a piece of chicken to cook, that it's going to get cooked properly. I know that if I give him a cake to bake, I'm going to have a cake. I know that if I place 
an, an animal in front of him, he's going to learn how to multiply them and have many animals. I know that if I give him finances to deal with, he's going to take the finances and he's going to multiply those finances. You know what God would say to someone here in this room tonight? To say, Pastor Tony, I have to test you before I could send you out. Brother Ralph, I have to test you before I can send you out. Sister Diane, I'm going to have to test you before I send you out. Because I want to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that if I take you guys and I give you a ministry that maybe your father might build and I need the, the building to continue going on, I have to have a person that I can trust to be able to send out. So hold on. I'm going to put you through some tests. I want to see what you built of. I want to see what you made of. I want to see who you decide to make company with. I want to see who you're going to decide between both of you, who you're going to bring in to be able to take this ministry to another level. But first, There's some adjustments that I might have to make in all of your lives. See, you guys may be used to living one way, acting one way, talking one way, but hold on, in the kingdom, maybe that way isn't the way that I want it done. So I'm going to have to take you, pull you in, and I'm going to have to tweak you just a little bit. And I know that when I tweak you, it might hurt. Because there's some things you might have to let go and let God so that I could be able to take you to that next level. Is that all right? It's okay? You answer to that call? Okay. I want you to understand that if, you have, if you're broken inside, I need to fix those areas that are broken inside of you so that I know that when I put you in the fire, when I take you and I mold you and I meet you and I take you and I touch you and I make you into everything I need, that when I send you out, I know that you're not going to quit when I give you the call. I know you're not going to quit. I know you're not going to run. You've proved it to me. You're here tonight. Remember what I said before about the test? Each one of you is what I'm talking about here tonight. We could take the same preference and move it to anyone here in this room here tonight. God is calling you. God is testing you. And some of you are giving in to the test. Instead of allowing your test to become a testimony. You got something to testify about? With all the years you have in this church? With all the time that you spent learning to be the woman of God that you are? This man of God that, that maybe one day when he first came here, sat here and said to himself, I don't know what to do, but I know you're calling me, Lord. I know that one day I will know what to do, Lord. And then today, he prophesies on our pulpit. This is your night, chief. You hear me? This is your night, too. You have another man 
that testified that he may have robbed you if you would have told him anything wrong, but this man came here, testified about his life, and you know what was his question that he proposed to all of you? Are you all in? Are you all in? Are you in for the long haul? Do you trust the God that you serve? Do you trust him with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all everything that he's given you? If he tells you give it away, do you really trust that he will do what he did for Job? Hallelujah. Sometimes it hurts. Sometimes it hurts. Does it hurt to be a pastor? Sometimes. Doesn't it, doesn't it hurt when they stretch you, when they pull you, when 10 different people are surrounding you with 10 different problems at one time, and you serve, and you got one mouth to speak with, but you know what? You speak with the authority of God, and all 10 of them get the message of what God has to say for their problems. If you could trust me, then you could test me, then you could fix me, then you could use me. You hear me? How many want to be used here in the house? How many want to be fixed tonight? How many trust that mustard seed faith could turn it all around for you? That if you speak to that mountain, that that mountain would be removed in your life. I had someone here tonight that testified to me about he spoke to someone tonight. And he said some eloquent things to him. And then he says, I could take you to the house, but I can't do the job in you. I have to allow God to do the work in you. I said, brother, it's like taking somebody to the water. And they tell you, well, what do I do now? And you just turn around and you look at them and you say, you drink. You drink from the water. Come drink from this water and you will never thirst again. You will never thirst again when you drink from the water that God is pouring out from the heavenlies. Now we go back to Job. Listen with ears to hear. Thank you. What God is saying with what I'm going to say right now. Everything I did, I did through hearsay. Everything I did, I did through hearsay. After he went through the test, listen to this, hear with the ears of God. After he went through the test, you know what he could say? Now I know. Did you hear that? Did that go over your head? Before Job went through everything that he went through, he just couldn't understand. Because he was in a process. And God put him on a journey. And Job couldn't understand it all. But once he did get the understanding, once he got the revelation and the download of what God had done in his life, 
he was able to say, he couldn't say, which was his mess, and then he says, now I know what his message. Do you hear this? You got you to gotta listen to this because this is something that is deep in the spirit and you, the only way you're going to understand what I'm saying is if you're hearing it through God's ear. He couldn't say, now I know, until he experienced what he went through. If he hadn't gone through what he went through, he could never say, now I know. Just like I said about the cake. I made the cake. I made a mess. You know what? Now I know. I took all of the ingredients and did what I thought was right and it was wrong. Now I know. I'm still in the process. I'm still going further along in this journey. And I'm going to have to keep going on in this journey. And I'm going to have to keep my apron on a little bit longer just till I learn how to be able to go through the process and make that cake right, that when I cut it, it's still moist inside. Huh. Is this touching anyone here tonight? So, he could say with a mess, now I know for the message. If I knew before the journey, but I didn't. Here we go. I'm talking in a riddle again. If I knew before the journey, but I didn't. You see, before I went to, through the journey, I would have never known that I was going to take on all of this mess but at the end of the journey and at the end of the process, when God illuminated me and I understood that it was a process, now I know. Now I know. See, some of you may have seen somebody take an alternate out of a car, how easy it was. They pulled the belt, they took two screws out, they took this wiring out, they took it out in one second, they took the other one, they popped it in, took two screws, pulled the belt back on, and it was done. You went and did it, and you broke three fingers. I've seen people do it with my own eyes. I own the business, three businesses, but one of my businesses was a mechanical shop. Guy thought he knew it all, you know. It was a young kid that hanged out in my shop, and he tore up all his fingers putting in an alternator because he seen my mechanic do it in five minutes. He thought he could do it, and he tore his hands up. So, got another hour and 15 minutes. So we established now that Rome wasn't built in one day. There was a journey, there was a thought, there was a process. We had to sit down and make blueprints. We had to go to, to contractors and figure out how many bulldozers, how many people, how many bricks, how many uh, tons of concrete. We had to go through a whole planning stage before we could make it come to pass. And that's the same thing I went through with all of these things that I'm talking about to move along as quick as I can because I don't want us to to be caught up too long. Don't get, up, don't get caught up in the do's and the dozens, because a lot of us do. We get caught up in the do's and the dozens and the this, and I shouldn't, and I wouldn't, and I couldn't, and I didn't. And then, Listen, your journey goes from speculation, when we're thinking about building something, right? It goes from speculation to revelation. You hear me? It goes from speculation to revelation. You did your work. You found out what was needed. You got it all down pat. You have it in a file. Now I can present to you, sir, this is what it's going to take to be able to get this job done. And stand in confidence that I'm going to still make mines and you're going to be able to get what you need it done. It's the finished work. All right? 
that all comes in that revelation part, okay? After the storm that Job went through, he said, I was able to see the Lord differently. He said, after the storm, I was able to see the Lord differently. How many of you guys been through a storm? We said it before. How many been through a storm? How many been through a storm here? How many been through a storm here? After the storm, they were able to see differently. How many people are seeing differently tonight after we're talking about this? Come on, is there a few of you? One or two? Makes it worth it for me. Hallelujah. I didn't come to save the world. These are some twists and turns that we got to understand we're going to go through in life. Life is a journey. Some here tonight, I hate to say something, I'm just a messenger. Y'all mind? Should I stop right here or should I keep going? You want me to keep going, Pastor? I'm just a messenger. Don't get mad at the messenger, all right? There's a download. I get the download. I give it to you. Now you run with it or you take it and throw it under the seat or you do whatever you want with it, but I'm just a messenger. I don't want you throwing no bricks, no Bibles, no nothing at me, all right? I'm very sensitive. I get back in blues real easy. All right? I hate to say to you guys, but there's some people in this room that are stuck. I'm just a messenger. There's some people in this room, there's some people that are watching via internet, there's some people in their cars, in their home, that are stuck tonight. You're stuck with the wrong mentality. You're stuck with the wrong mindset. You're stuck with the way you're doing things. You're stuck and you don't want to change. You're stuck. You see the, you see the instructions and you read them and you get no, no nothing from reading the, the instructions because it hasn't changed you a bit. The Lord sends you instructions. The Lord sends you an instructor the Lord sent you a family that would give up everything in their lives to see you make it to where you are today. And you're still stuck. You're still stuck. I'm sorry for saying this, guys. Nothing, no pun intended. How you say that? I heard it. it just sounds cool, you know. No pun intended, okay, guys? All right. You're stuck alone, you're wounded, you're a mess with no message, out there lost in the world, out there, and now you've been brought from every place they could have been brought, Lewis, they were brought to the lighthouse. Do you hear that? They were brought to the lighthouse. Man, couldn't you take me anywhere else so I don't feel so bad? You brought me to the lighthouse. People here should be glowing and radiating and, and just, just abounding in the blessings of God, seeing what's going on here, the abundance in, and the amount of people that are coming here and going away with substance in their hands and with a word in their heart. As long as you're stuck, it's never going to be a change. As long as you're stuck, all of that that we talked about, that it only takes a mustard seed faith to tell that mountain to move from here to there, and the Lord thy God has instructed you in his book that I give you the authority. Listen, I'm not just telling you something. I not only say it to you, I write it in my word that I give you the authority to say to this mountain, Move from here to here. Get out of my way, Satan. Get out of my way, mountain.
You guys want to hear a little more? Or you want me to stop? <laughs> a little over an hour left. Okay. You know what's a crazy thing? This one, this one really gets me. Success, hey pastor, success in one area can make you arrogant in another area. You hear that? Success in this area can make you very arrogant in that one. That's a shame. That should be a capital crime. There should be a punishment for that, that you get 100 lashes for that one. And I'm real serious when I say it. You're good at one thing, but it doesn't mean that you're good at another. You're good at this, but you might not be good at that. Anybody getting something here tonight? Stop trying to do it all yourself. Stop trying to do it all yourself. Let me come over here. Stop trying to do it all yourself. The problem today is everybody wants to be their own mechanic. There's too many chiefs and not enough Indians. There's too many chiefs. Listen to me. Where are the laborers? Where are those that will come and clean up? Where are those that will come and paint the moldings we've been talking about for a year? Where are those that will show up when 400 people got to be served outside and then you know what, 20 minutes later they're in their car and they're gone. Where are they? I'm sorry, Pastor Tom. I'm just a messenger. Sorry. Forgive me, guys. Forgive me. Your heart and your emotions are so blocked up that nothing good gets in and nothing good gets out because you've allowed your emotions to get so blocked up that it doesn't allow you to function. And I come to tell you tonight, I want you to get your emotions in order. I need you tonight when the fountain is open for you to come, to be able to come and make it right with God tonight. Because tomorrow's not promised for any one of you. For none of you, if you think tomorrow's promise, you tell me, call me to the side so we can pray together. Some people here believe they're living, Pastor Tony. They believe they're living. And you know what they're really doing? Just existing. I'm sorry, this ain't, I'm not talking about you guys. I'm talking about what's going on here on earth. So don't everybody get offended when I talk because what I'm talking about is not just us, it's about every Christian in the world. We're just existing, guys. Unless we take that realization pill that Job did and understand that we're in a journey and there's going to be a process in that journey, okay? I'm going to try to move this along as quick as I can. The Lord has been trying to send somebody to you for so long, but the problem is that you won't let them in. You won't let them in. 
It's like that story all of us have heard about the guy at the top of the tree, and he's praying, Lord, uh, Lord, 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 send somebody, send some, Lord, come, Lord, save me. He sends a log, a log goes by, they don't get it. He sends a boat, the boat goes by, uh, a helicopter shows up and says, come on, come on, come on. No, I'm waiting on the Lord. No, he's waiting on you. He sent so many ways out for you and you didn't decide to take any one of the routes that he gave you. Here goes the other one. Here goes another crazy one. The Lord sends someone to visit you, but you have a child lock on your door. You know why I say a child lock? Because you let childish things stop you from where God is taking you. You allow childish things. Oh, no, but, but he went before me. He ate my food. No. It could be anything. Childish things. And you take a child lock and you put it on your door. You know what the Lord told me tonight before I came here tonight? He said to me, no one here is going to leave the way they came. No one here is going to leave the way they came. And I'm going to, you know, arrogance destroys opportunity and, you know, we got, oh, here, here goes a good one. Should I? Should I? Should I close it off or should I? I came prepared tonight. Shouldn't have gave me a month's notice. Shouldn't have gave me a month's notice. Listen to me. Stop saying I can't do something. Stop saying to people, I can't do it. Stop it. Christians, I'm calling you to stop it. Stop it. Stop it. You know what you need to say? Who wants to know how, what, what, you, what, what you think you should say? Who wants to know? Okay. As long as there's some hungry people, I'm willing to talk about it. You need to say, show me, Lord. Show me, Lord. Show me your way. Show me what to do. Show me what it is that I have to say. Show me, Lord. Show me. And you know what's going to happen when you say to the Lord, instead of I can't, and you say, show me, Lord? You really want to know? Anybody really wants to know what the Lord is going to say? When you say, show me, Lord, that's the nectar. You hear me? Don't let this go over you. That's the nectar that causes the rabbi to show up. Let me say it on this side. It's a little too quiet for me here. It's the nectar that causes the rabbi to show up for every one of you. When you ask him, show me, Lord, show me, Lord, show me, Lord, show me. I think your prayer, 90% of it should be, show me, Lord. If you don't know what it is that you're called to do 
and you don't know what God is calling you to do, I ask you tonight that when you pray, ask him, show me, Lord. And I know we all tired and let's just take five minutes. To, I mean five minutes. 30 seconds. Everybody stand up. Let's just give them the best praise you got in the house. Come on. The best. The best. The best. Come on. The best. The best. The best. Yes. Woo. Okay, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. You're messing with my time now, and I don't got a lot of time left, so I got to ask you to sit down, all right? We're going to try to make this quick, okay, guys? Enough. You ready? Got to get back on it. Pastor Tony. Sorry that I got to. I got to ask you guys, because I know you guys are Bible scholars and understand the word, and I know everybody here understands the word, but I have a question. All right, maybe you can give me an answer. Even you, Brother Juan. Even you, Brother. Does the Lord want you to have the key to the kingdom? Everybody? So... We're going to a pocket. This, this is a cool key. <laughs> Does he want you to have a key to the kingdom? Everybody over here said the same thing? He wants you to have a key to the kingdom. you to have a key. You see, giving you the kingdom is the big thing. And the little thing is him giving you the key that unlocks the door, right? Because it only takes that little key. Woo! Look what's inside door number one. And you can go to door number two and look inside and say, oh, my God, looks what's behind door number two. And you can go on with that for the rest of your life because you have access, because you have the key, because the Lord found it in your favor to give you a key to the kingdom. My question to you tonight is, what are you doing with your key? What are you doing with your key? What are you doing with your key, somebody? What are you doing with your key? If you're not accessing the things of God, which he wants you to access, he's giving you a key freely to the kingdom. How's he looking at you? He looks at you like, you're my child, you're my daughter, you're my every, you're my beloved, just like you beloved him, he beloves you, and I, and, and I love you so much that I want to give you a key that you can be able to access the kingdom. Ask yourself uh, in your next prayer time about that, because there's a lot more, because of time's sake, I can't finish what I want to say. There's a lot that I have to say. But there's one more thing, maybe two more things, maybe three more things. We've got to get into this closing, all right? <laughs> Number one, I'm just a messenger. Don't shoot me. Don't throw things at me. I told you I get black and blues easy. The thing that befuddles me the most is that when people come to church, they come to church late and they leave early. And I ain't come to cast no stones on nobody because we all have our reasons why this happens. Why you come late and why you leave early. You know, when I, I know people that have gone to a football game, missed the whole football game, but stayed there to eat. 
So I want you to look at your neighbor, look at your neighbor, and I want you to tell your neighbor, I'm not leaving till I got what God has for me. I'm not leaving till I got what God has for me. I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving till I got it. If I don't got it, I ain't going nowhere. I'm staying right here. Amen. See you. Good night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's right. Amen. 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 Buenas noches, hermano. talk about a quick little story and I'm going to try to close it down because I know everybody wants to go home. I want to try to get you out on time. <laughs> Philip, I mean, is anybody in a hurry tonight? Because I'll dismiss you right now. If you're in a hurry, tell me, be honest, I'll dismiss it right now. Keep on? Okay. Philip was called by God to run after the chariot, to catch up with the eunuch. And the reason why the Lord asked him to catch up with the eunuch was because he had a message for that eunuch. And for time's sake, I'm not going to get into the whole message. I'm just going to say that he delivered the package and it changed her life forever. It changed her life forever, all right? But check this out. Let's see where I'm at here. Yeah. Okay. Run, catch the chariot, drop the message. Now he's riding with her in, the, in, the, in this, you know, coach. And he turns around, he sees that he's coming up to the waters, and he asks a question. If thou believeth me, will you come down to the waters with me so I can baptize you? Will you come down to the waters with me so that I can baptize you? And I have the same question for you. I come tonight just like Philip. If thou believest me, it's time to come to the waters in just a moment where you will be baptized. Where what I spoke about earlier, about no one's going to leave here without having something, is going to happen in your life between you and the God that you serve. Okay? And, you know, I ask myself, Pastor Tony, when you want to baptize people, if somebody didn't want to bend their knees, could they be baptized? Yeah, I would believe they could, they, could, they could be baptized. But if they didn't bend their knees, it kind of meant that they didn't trust in you. Because when somebody trusts in you, they relinquish everything to you, and they trust in you that you're doing the work of God in their lives, and that when they go down, they're going to come back a new creation, a whole new person. So now, if you're going to come down to these waters and you're not going to bend your knees, it's kind of saying to God, you know what, Lord? Maybe I just don't believe. Maybe there's a little bit of doubt or whatever it may be. Do 
need to be willing tonight to let go and let God. How many people here are willing to let go and let God? Slap your neighbor and say, let's go. Come on. Slap your neighbor and say, let's go. <laughs> See? If God would take you down, I guarantee you he's going to lift you back up. But if he's going to take you down and he's going to lift you back up, you're going to need to trust him that he will do what he said he would do. All right? He's asking you, get in the water, for I'll be here with you. I look at my neighbor and I tell them, if I was you, I may go down, but watch this. I look at my neighbor and I tell them, I may go down, but watch this. See, you will not know me in the power of my resurrection. You will not know me in the power of my resurrection until you know me in the power of my suffering. Until you know me in the power of my suffering. If I take you down, trust me, while you're on the downside, that there's something going on and something happening in your life. Just cast all your cares upon me, your pains, your burdens, your sorrows. Cast it all upon me. And in my closing, take someone by the hand. Can we all get up? And on the count of three, I just want you to run. No. <laughs> Take somebody's hands. Everybody should have somebody's hands in their hands. Come on, everybody. I want everybody to close your eyes. This is going to be a holy moment. And I just want you to trust in God. Everybody in this house, close your eyes right now. Let it be just you and God. I want you to start to shake it off real lightly. Shake it off. Come on, shake the hand. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. All that that's going on, shake it off right now. Shake it off. Shake it off. Come on, get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Come on. Come on. Shake it off. You're coming up right now. Come on. Shake it off. Keep shaking right now. Don't stop. Don't look around. Keep your eyes closed. Keep shaking right now. Come on. Give them some praise in the middle of shaking it. Come on. Come on. Give them some praise right now in the middle of shaking it. Come on. Praise him like you're coming out right now. Praise him like you're coming out the waters right now. Come on. Praise him like you're coming out of the fire right now. Come on. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Stop for just one second. I want to say something to you in the middle of this. When the eunuch came up out of the waters, Philip was not there. Remember what I said about it could go over your head or have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying? As they shook, as, as she came up out of the waters, Philip disappeared. So again, come on, shake. Come on, shake. Praise him. Close your eyes. Trust in God. Come on. Come on. You're on a journey right now. Come on. You're on a journey right now. Open your heart right now and give him some praise. Come on. He loves when you praise him. Come on, he loves when you praise him. You see, when you're being praised, hallelujah, 
you give some praise. Hallelujah. When you're being tested, you give some praise. Hallelujah. Come on. It'll take some faith. Ha. Huh? You're going under right now. Come on. Praise him. Come on. Keep your eyes closed. Keep on. Shake, shake, shake. Come on. I can't go up until I go down tonight. Shake, shake, shake. 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 Now, I want you to look at your neighbor dead in the eyes and tell them, I can't do this alone. I can't do this alone. I can't do this alone. I need you. I need you. I need you. I need you. This is serious, guys. I need you. Come on, one more, two more seconds, 20 more seconds. I want you to take their hands, shake it again. Close your eyes. Come on, give them some praise. Give them some praise. How many want a breakthrough? Give them some praise. Give them some praise. Tell the Lord, this is my moment. Give them some praise. You see? I want everybody to stop for a moment again. I want everybody to stop a moment again. And I want everybody here, under the sound of my voice, to tell the Lord, Lord, this is my chariot. I give it unto you. I want you to be the pilot. I want you to be the one that takes care of it. Oh, and takes care of me. How many believe that tonight? Mm, we're almost there, guys. Shake, shake, shake again. Shake, shake, shake again. Come on. This is holy. Listen to me when I'm telling you. Close your eyes. Shake, shake, shake. I want you, Lord, to catch them in their cars, oh God. Shake, shake, shake. Come on. Catch them on the road, Lord. Shake, shake, shake. Catch them on the internet, Lord. Shake, shake, shake. We're all in, oh God. Come on, shake, shake, shake. Let this message go down deep. Come on. Shake, shake, shake. Hallelujah. You see, that someone would get their key tonight, Lord. Shake, shake, shake. Ha, the key to the city, Lord. Ha, the key to the kingdom, Lord. Come on, keep shaking. Keep shaking. It's holy. Come on. Ah, Lord, that you would unlock the finances of these people, oh God, tonight. Lord, that you would, Lord God, that you would heal these people here tonight. Keep shaking. Keep shaking. Keep shaking. Their families will be made whole tonight in the name of Jesus. Keep shaking. Hallelujah. Come on. We're shaking it off tonight. Their marriages, hallelujah will be rekindled tonight in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, now, everybody's ready? Run to the altars. Run to the altars. Run to the altars. Run, come on. Run, 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 run. Run, 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 come on. Run to the altars. Come on, run. In the name of Jesus, run. Bend your knees, come on. Get down before him tonight. This is holy tonight. Bend your knees tonight, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, come. Come. Come, now pray, 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 everybody here. Pray, pray, pray. Come on. I don't want nobody in this house talking. If you got to talk, get out the room. Go outside. This is holy. Pray. Pray for what you want. Pray for what you need. In the name of Jesus right now. Come on. 
Release it right now, right here. Release it in the name of Jesus. Release it. Release that loved one. Release that one that hurt you the most. Release that one, hallelujah, that you've been praying for for so much time, trusting in God tonight, that they're going to be made whole, that they're going to get a key tonight. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, one more minute. Everybody, everybody under the sound of my voice praying. Everybody praying, everybody praying, everybody praying, everybody praying in the name of Jesus. Thirty more seconds. Come on. Thirty more seconds. Let it go. Thirty more seconds. Rent your heart. Let it go. Rent your heart. Let it go. Come on. That person. That thing. That situation. That sickness. Right now, he wants to give you the key. Come on. Fifteen more seconds. Come on. Let it go right here. Come on. Ten more seconds. Let it go. Let it go. Five more seconds. Let it go. Okay, I need everybody to stand back up. Stay right here. I don't want nobody to leave. Repeat after me. Father, I surrender it all unto you. Father, tonight I ask for the key that's going to unlock all these situations that I've placed at your feet. And tonight I believe I've been made whole. 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 Of Jesus and the people of God. Amen. 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 Woo.
Hallelujah. Have y'all been blessed? Amen. I found faith on the journey. Amen. Amen. Before we close, enjoy the ride to the destination. Don't say so focused on the destination that you get frustrated on your way to the destination. Because God is always showing you something. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Roger. God bless you, man. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We'll be back Sunday morning. Amen. Let's lift our hands up to the Lord. Father, we just thank you tonight for that powerful word. And, Father, we ask right now in the name of Jesus that you will seal it in our hearts. Father, bring back to our remembrance the things that we heard in a time of need. Ephesians 3.20. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think.